Now we're going to take a look at cleaning our scan and cut mats. Often after a couple of uses the tackiness seems to go away. So to clean the mat, just to remove all the residue from the pieces of material that you've been cutting, it's important to get some baby wipes. Now make sure that you buy the fragrance free ones that have got no alcohol in them. Also make sure that they don't have any added oils and fragrances etc. So it's the plain fragrance free alcohol free baby wipe. Now what you're going to do is just take the baby wipe and then what I do is I just fold it up so that I can wrap it around my fingers and then just rub. Now you need to rub fairly vigorously and rub across the whole mat. So this will take you a couple of minutes just to get it really nice and clean. So you just rub and rub and rub and what I also like to do is just over the areas where the registration marks are and also in your ruler lines also give that a good clean. Now once I've cleaned the front, I also just flip over to the back and then I clean the back as well, particularly along these tracks that have been worn into the mat. Now just leave it to dry for about two or three minutes because you'll notice that once you finish cleaning it, it doesn't feel tacky yet. But after it's air dried for a couple of minutes, you'll see that the tackiness will come back. So I'll show you after it stood for a few minutes how the tackiness comes back. Now I've left the mat to air dry for a couple of minutes. So now if I stick my fingers or my hands on the mat, I can actually lift the mat again. So it's become pretty tacky again, whereas before it wasn't. So that's just because I've removed all the residue from the bits of paper and card and all the other different materials that I've been cutting on this mat. Now once it has air dried for those couple of minutes and you have got the tackiness back then simply take your protective plastic sheet and pop that back over so that it keeps it dust free. Now at some stage your mat is going to lose a lot of its tackiness. Now when that happens you're going to find that the material that you're trying to cut will start moving on the mat and that's not a good idea. So there are two options as far as remedying this problem goes. The first one is to take whatever it is that you want to cut like for example if I wanted to put this card onto the mat and I found that it wasn't sticky enough then I could take the card and I could take the MSA 1100 which is a temporary adhesive spray and I could in fact just spray that onto the card itself and then put the glue side of the card down onto my cutting mat. Now that would remedy it just for that one application. Now this is a nice option to know about for a quick fix. However, there's going to come a time where it would be more practical to actually apply glue to your actual mat. Now the glue that I like to use is this particular one here. And the reason that I like to use this and apply it directly to the mat is that it has a really good adhesive tackiness that is perfect for the standard tack mat. So I'm going to show you how to prepare your mat before you actually apply the spray onto the mat. Now before I apply my glue to my mat, what I do is I take a bin liner, one of these recyclable bin liners, and then I put that onto my work surface. Then the very next thing that I'm going to do is I need to mask off all of the areas 
that mustn't have glue on them at all. So in other words, we're only going to be left with the area that needs glue to be applied to it that is exposed. So I like to use this blue masking tape, they call it painter's tape, and you can buy that from the hardware stores. And then I just popped a piece down the one side making sure to cover the black ruler edge of the mat and I've done the same on the opposite side and then I've pre-cut some strips and I've doubled them up so I've got two strips that are slightly overlapped because I need to cover this black ruler section and all of these registration marks. Now it's very important that you cover those as well so that's why I've made a double strip. So I just pop that on and smooth that down and then I do the same on the opposite side. So I've already got some strips that are pre-cut and overlapped and then I pop those on over this side here making sure to cover the black ruler section as well as any of the registration marks. So now the area that needs to have glue applied to it is exposed. So now it's a matter of taking the spray adhesive and holding the can roughly 15 to 20 centimeters away from the surface of the mat and then just spraying evenly across and then what I do is once I've sprayed evenly across then I spray evenly up and down as well holding the can about 15 to 20 centimeters away from the mat. Now I normally do this outside and please make sure that your scan and cut machine is completely out of the way. However when I need to do this process inside then I have just made myself and I went and I got some of this plasticky Corex board and then I've just taped it together also with the painter's tape and then I form a shield that goes right around my mat. I'll just show you what I mean by that. So I've got this little shield that goes right the way around my mat and then what I can do is I can then take my spray glue and the shield is going to stop the glue from going all over. So I hold the can about 15 centimeters away and then I just lightly spray across and then across again. And then you can have a look to see that you've actually covered all of the important areas. Now this uh, plastic Corex board you could also obviously have used cardboard but the reason that I like this plastic Corex board is that I can clean this. With cardboard it's very difficult to clean it and to get rid of excess glue but on the plastic it's easy to remove it. Now once you have finished spraying your glue onto your mat just leave it for about 5 or 10 minutes just for the glue to settle and then you are going to be able to remove your masking tape. Now I just want to point out to you that this process I only do approximately once every three or four months and I use my scan and cut a lot. So I found that it stays nice and tacky for at least four months. Now if you're not going to use it all that often then it would last even longer. Now in between times what I do is I just give this a good clean with my baby wipe and then I let it air dry. So after I've used it a couple of times just use the baby wipe, allow it to air dry and then this tackiness will come back again. Now after a couple of months when you find that it's not as tacky as it should be then you can repeat this process again. Now once I'm done with gluing my mat then all I do is I lift off 
the pieces of painter's tape or masking tape and then what I like to do is I can actually reuse these again so I take the plastic dust cover from the mat that I don't use as often which is my low-tech mat and then I just pop these pieces of tape onto that cover so that I always have all of my pre-cut pieces on top of this cover that lives on top of my low tech mat then each time I want to do this process I can quickly lift them off and pop them onto my mat now obviously after a little while after you've used them a couple of times then it would be time to throw them away and cut yourself some new strips but that is how I do it but for now I'm going to pop this piece back on top of my mat because now I'm going to show you how to clean all of the excess glue off because after you have sprayed this adhesive onto the mat a couple of times it eventually builds up and it starts to look awful now my mat is at that stage where it is starting to look awful so I am going to now strip all of this glue off of the mat and then re-sticky it again so I'm going to just pop this back on making sure to cover all of those ruler lines and registration marks so now I'm going to show you the process to strip the glue off of the mat now to strip all of this gunji glue off of the mat what you're going to need is what is called gum glue and label remover now this is a special product that I've had mixed that we've used for many years on the embroidery frames or embroidery hoops on the brother embroidery machines because we use temporary adhesive spray near those frames as well and when they start looking a bit gummy this is what we use to strip the glue off with now please be careful don't use any harsh detergents or pure alcohols or acetone or anything like that on your mat because what will happen is that you're going to end up cracking your mats now this has been specially formulated so that it attacks the glue and it removes the glue so it's only there's enough of a solvent in there to move the glue but not to damage the mat so that's the gum glue and label remover and what I'm going to do is I'm now going to go and spray that on lightly now when I say lightly you need to spray it on so that you can actually see it and it must actually look quite wet but you must not allow it to dry so I'm spraying this on and it's and I'm making sure that it's wet so I'll just spray that on now if you prefer you could pour some on it really doesn't matter I just spray it because it makes it it distributes it more evenly so there we go so now it's like pretty wet now don't allow it to dry that's the most important thing because if it dries then it loses its ability to dissolve the glue so we just wait a couple of seconds and then we can start and I can see it's not ready yet there it is ready so I can start moving this now I'm just using a nylon scraper but you can use a paint scraper you could use an old credit card you could use anything don't use anything that's going to damage your mat though so now you can see that all this gummy stuff is starting to move so I'm just going to patiently sit here and I'm going to move this all off now you may need to repeat this process two or perhaps three times depending on how much glue is on your mat but you'll be able to see as you go so now you'll see in particular if you have a look here and I'll just move this a little bit now I'm not gouging into the mat I'm just gently moving the glue now you'll be able to see as I mentioned that there are some parts of the mat where you can see the glue is now completely off of the mat so it looks
like it looks on the edge of the mat. So I'm not going to bore you with doing this entire mat. So what I'll do is I'm going to come back and then I'm going to show you the end result. So now you'll be able to see I've done quite a substantial amount of the mat and now it's time for me to put on my disposable gloves and the only reason that I do this is because I don't like the feel of all this gunji gunky stuff so what I do is I take a baby wipe and then you can actually just scrape all of this up and dispose of it so I just scrape it all into a little pile and then I'll come back and I'll finish off that last little section and then I'll show you what it all looks like. So I just pick this up with one of the baby wipes and then just wipe as much as I can off of the mat. And this is all stuff that can be put into the recycle bin so I'll just pop that into the recycle bin and then afterwards once I've finished with this bin liner I just tip it inside out so that if there is any glue or anything on the outside of the bin liner it ends up inside the bin liner and I can still use it as a bag. So now I've completely finished scraping all of the glue off of here and then what I did was I just took a baby wipe and then I wiped and I got that nice and clean and then what I did was I took another baby wipe, a clean one again and then I gave the mat a good clean with that baby wipe. Now I had to go back, there were two or three little spots where the glue hadn't come off first time so I just put a little bit onto those spots and scraped it off. So now it's completely clean and there's no sticky glue anywhere on this mat. Now once you've finished cleaning with the baby wipes then it's a good idea just to take a damp cloth. So I've just swished this through in some clean water with no soap or anything in it and then I give the mat a good wipe. So we just give that a good wipe with clean a clean rag that's got that's been swished through in clean water and then I just tip it over and I do that again. Now the reason that I'm doing this is just to make sure that I'm wiping off any of the solvent that might still be on the mat. So now I'm sure that um, I've got most of it and then I can tip that over again to another clean side and just do that again and then I'm just going to leave this to dry for about five minutes or so and then I'm going to come back and I'm going to re-sticky it with my glue. So I'll just clean my scraper again for next time and as you can see I haven't actually used all that much of this gum glue and label remover and you only need to do this about once every six or eight months. Obviously if you want to do it more often than that that's fine but I find that if I re-sticky my mat say for example three times after the third application of the glue I like to strip it all off but that is a personal preference and it's because the mat was looking so awful and remember it's not really what it looks like it's how it works and that's what's the important thing here but I like my mat to look pretty decent every now and again so it's been time now for it to have a complete re-strip and I'm going to now re-sticky it and then it will be good for a good few months still. Now obviously after a while your mats are going to start looking so shocking that you can't bear to look at them anymore then it would be time just to get a new mat. So here I have my beautifully clean mat and I've allowed it to dry for a couple of minutes so it's completely dry. Now I'm ready to put some more of my glue onto the mat. So I've popped my screen around the board and I'm just going to start spraying. So I hold the can about 15 to 20 centimeters away from the board, spray across 
and now I'm going to spray up and down and then that should give it a nice even coating and you can see if there are any little places that you've missed you can just go and give them a little touch up so now I'm going to leave that to dry for about five minutes and then once that's done I can remove my masking tape and the masking tape I'm going to pop onto my dust cover of my low tech mat and then they'll be ready there for the next time that I either want to apply glue or if I want to strip the mat. So here I have my mat that is all re-stickied and it's nice and tacky so this will be good for a long while yet and it still looks pretty new again. Then what I did was I took all the masking tape off of the board and what I've done is I've popped it onto the dust cover of my low tech mat which I don't use all that often so I just leave it on there and then the next time that I want to use it it's all ready for me now just one quick thing when you put the dust cover back onto your newly glued mat pop it on but don't rub it down because it's pretty sticky right now and you'll find that if you put it on too hard then you're going to battle to get the cover off so just put it on and just pop it down like that and then it's ready for use if it does get stuck on there quite viciously it's not really a problem you just lift it off because after a while um, the tackiness will tone down but for now it's absolutely perfect to be used again Now as far as my little screen goes, all I do is I just fold it up and I fold it flat and then I store that somewhere nice and safe so that the next time I want to use it, it's ready. Now you'll notice that around the edges of this plastic Corex board, I've put the painter's tap and the only reason that I've done that is because it tends to have sharp edges and I have cut myself on it before so I don't like to take those chances anymore so I just pop the tape all the way around and it makes a nice neat little screen that I can fold up and pack away. Now if the glue builds up on there I just take a little bit of my gum glue and label remover put it onto a baby wipe and I give it a good old wipe and then it's as good as new again.